In this video, I'm going to share my early picks for top commons in each color from the newest expansion of Magic the Gathering, Phyrexia All Will Be One. First up is white, and in at number three, Duelist of Deep Faith. For one and a white, we get a 2-2 Phyrexian Soldier with Toxic One. As long as it's your turn, Duelist of Deep Faith has First Strike. Keeping in mind what I said earlier about Toxic and Corrupted, this is going to be really tough to block when it's attacking on turn three and should help you land that ever important first poison counter. The white color pairs look aggressive and this should be a premium two drop for those decks. Plus the curve of this on turn two into a turn three Flensing Raptor looks really good. A 2-2 First Strike also wears equipment quite nicely. Number two, Planner Disruption. For one and a white, we get an Enchantment Aura. You can enchant an artifact, creature, or planeswalker. Enchanted Permanent can't attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated. Effects like this are always good, your bread and butter white removal at common. This card should consistently trade up on mana, it's good when you're ahead to push an advantage, and good when you're behind to remove a big threat. Be warned that this does carry some risk due to the two bounce effects at common, Indoctrination Attendant, and Surgical Skull Bomb. And number one, Basilica Shepherd. For three white white, we get a 3-3 Phyrexian Angel with flying. When it enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one colorless Phyrexian Might artifact creature tokens with Toxic 1, and this creature can't block. This army in a can should be a great curve topper for your white decks, helping close out games in the air, or help you peck in for the last few poison counters. And the Might tokens are artifacts, so they enable other things like the Mandible Justiciar or Tamio's Logbook, and the extra bodies can be sacrificed to other effects like Annihilating Glare. Next up is Blue, and in at number 3, Quicksilver Fisher. For 3 blue blue, we get a 4-3 Phyrexian Drake with flying. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card, then discard a card. Just a solid rate, great curve topper in your blue decks, helps mitigate flood in the late game and dig to more spells. I'll be happy to play this in any blue deck. Number 2, Mesmerizing Dose. For one blue blue, we get an enchantment aura. You can enchant a creature. When it enters the battlefield, tap that creature and then proliferate. The enchanted creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. This is your blue removal at common for all will be one. The mana cost is a bit restrictive, but these effects are always solid. As with planner disruption, you take a bit of risk with these since it doesn't remove the creature entirely. However, proliferate is a nice bonus, helping you enable corrupted for bring the ending or distorted curiosity or to get more oil counters on powerful cards like atmosphere surgeon and Serum Core Chimera. And number one, bring the ending. For one in a blue, we get an instant counter target spell unless its controller pays two. If your opponent is corrupted, counter that spell instead. At its baseline, a solid counter in the early to mid game. A two mana tax is enough to nab some three or four mana spells depending on when you choose to leave this up. Cards like this also get better when you have lots of things to do at instant speed in case your opponent decides to play around the counter spell. So this pairs well with Experimental Augury, Prologue to Phyresis, or Thrill of Possibility. There's also a flash creature at common in blue, Chrome Prowler. And normally cards like this do struggle to scale with the game, but if you put some work in and manage to get three poison counters on your opponent, this becomes extremely powerful, countering anything for just two mana. Now let's move on to black with number three, Shouldred's Head Cleaver. For three and a black, we get a 2-4 Phyrexian Warrior with Menace and Toxic 2. A 2-4 blocks well the turn it comes down, helping stave off aggressive starts from your opponent, but the Toxic 2 and Menace is a great enabler for your corrupted payoffs or for racing to 10 poison counters. Attacking with a 2-4 Menace requires your opponent to put some real creatures in front of it. And remember, the 1-1 Might tokens can't block. This will be excellent with combat tricks like Complete Devotion and equipment like Hex Gold Halberd or Hex Cold Hoverwings. In at number two, Annihilating Glare. For a single black mana, we get a sorcery. As an additional cost to cast this spell, pay four or sacrifice an artifact or creature. Destroy target creature or planeswalker. Just a solid and potentially very cheap removal spell. Paying five isn't ideal, but a nice fail case. If you don't have anything laying around, you'd be fine sacrificing like a might token. And number one, Anoint with Affliction. For one and a black, we get an instant exile target creature if it has mana value three or less. Corrupted, exile that creature in Instead. The baseline for this card would already be one of the top commons. Two mana instant exile a creature is very good, but enable this and it will regularly be the best card in your deck. Now let's move on to red with number three, Barbed Batterfist. For one in a red, you get an artifact equipment with four Mirrodin, so it comes in with a 2-2 red rebel creature token. You attach this equipment to it. Equipped creature gets plus one, minus one. You can re-equip this for just a single mana. 
This looks to be the best of the four Mirrodin cards at common since the equipment you're left with is actually affordable to re-equip. This will enable tons of attacks and help you continue to push damage, turning smaller creatures into relevant threats later in the game. And again, the 1-1 one -one tokens generated by tons of cards in this set can't block, so a 2-mana 3-1 isn't as much of a liability as usual. Number 2, Hex Gold Slash. For a single red mana, we get an instant. Hex Gold Slash deals 2 damage to target creature. If that creature has Toxic, this deals 4 damage to that creature instead. 1 mana, deal 2 damage is solid, and you'll always play your first copy in your red decks. But getting to deal 4 to creatures with Toxic is not always relevant, but getting to trade up on mana against something like Nimrazer Paladin or Tyranix Atrocity will just decide games. And in at number 1, Volt Charge. For 2 and a red, you get an instant. This deals 3 damage to any target, Proliferate. Easy choice for the best red common, this will be good when you're ahead or behind, goes face and even gives you a proliferate to stack more oil counters on your stuff like Furnace Rider and Sawblade Scamp. And lastly, for the best green commons, in at number 3, Oil Gorger Troll. For 3 green green, we get a 3-4 Phyrexian Troll Warrior. When Oil Gorger Troll enters the battlefield, you gain 3 life. Then if you control a permanent with an oil counter on it, draw a card. It's easy to compare this to previous versions of this card we've seen, like Owlbear and Saros Packmate, which were the best green commons in their respective formats. Unlike those, however, this card can miss on the card draw, and a 5 mana 3 4 gain 3 is good but not great. So you'll want to make sure you have a solid density of cards that produce oil counters before you play this. The troll will be best in green red and green blue, where you're most likely to trigger its second ability. In at number 2, Ruthless Predation. For one in a green, we get a sorcery. Target creature you control gets plus one plus two until end of turn. It fights target creature you don't control. Solid green removal. You'll always want at least one copy of these in your green decks. Plus one plus two is huge, and this just does what you need it to do. And in at number one, Contagious Vorak. For two in a green, we get a three three Phyrexian Boar Beast. When it enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a land card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom in a random order. If you didn't put a card into your hand this way, proliferate. Solid baseline as a 3 mana 3-3, three, three, but then you get at least a proliferate trigger. Or instead, you could draw a land. You get to choose what would be most valuable to you at the time, and flexibility in limited is always strong. If you'd rather proliferate, just decline to reveal a land. You'll want to do some work to get value out of the proliferate, but this will be very good in any green deck. So knowing the top commons is a good start, but the next step is understanding how they work together to produce a winning deck. Watch this video next to learn about the 10 two-color archetypes in All Will Be One Draft, or you can watch the full draft guide here. If you found this useful, it really helps the channel if you hit the like button down below, and please consider subscribing so you're notified when I release more limited strategy videos just like this. Thanks for watching.